Welcome to CURL 777.0. This is May 26, 2021. Um, I just finished the release, put it up on the web and everything. And uh, yes, I am Daniel Stenberg that I hope you know and recognize by now. I work on CURL uh, since a pretty long time. I'm working for and with WolfSSL where we sell CURL support and offer CURL contracting, whatever you need. Today I'm going to stick to my regular curl presentation schedule and talk about a few numbers around the release, something about security in the release, because uh, this time we have three new things to talk about. Uh, new features and changes in this particular release, I count five or four, depending on how we count. There are a bunch of bug fixes I'm going to highlight, I think about nine of them that I think are interesting. There are many more to read up in, in the detailed change log. And a few m things that we're working on coming up next, uh, or not, we'll see about that. This is release 200. Counting from the very beginning, the, no the first one was then in March 1998, and then uh, we did releases pretty frequently early on, and then we've switched to the eight-week release cycle, I think, maybe 10, 12 years ago, roughly. So now we're on 200. So we're going to, we're keeping a steady uh, schedule and pace, I think. So um, yeah, around six, eight, maybe uh, sometimes 10 releases per year, depending on if we have to do patch releases that sort of abrupts the regular schedule. If we if we just do our eight week release schedule, of course you can count that eight times six is 48. So we, we do a little more than six per year on average. <coughs> this release, even though that I will mention in a second, this was a shorter release cycle than usual, we hit a new record in the number of persons named as contributors in the release notes. 82 different names, 44 new, and we count and now count 2,410 contributors named in the thanks document in total, which is, I think, is an amazing number. Um, when I got the, do you remember the Poland Prize Award I got in 2017? In that, in that, I have the motivation over here on some pla uh, sort of thing, diploma thing. Uh, and it says in 2017, we had 1400 names in the thanks in 20, early 2017. And now we have 2400 in well, mid 2021. So four and a half years later, maybe something, 1,000 new names in the list. I think that's uh, kind of cool. This release was also made by commits, by, uh, merged then authored by 20, 47 different authors, which, which is also uh, for the short period of time, some sort of record because it's more than one author per day on average then and we're now over 900 in total, 901 committers uh, counted, I think, uh, now. So a lot of people, and it this it was a 42-day release cycle because we cut the previous, we cut it short because we did a patch release, the 776.1, because uh, I messed up in the previous release. So ideally, hopefully, uh, we will now use 56 days until the next release, un unless, uh, I messed up in this release as well. I'm a little bit concerned about a certain Mac OS fix I merged just in within the last 24 hours, which is something you really, really should not do. I um, <coughs> I regret that I did it, but uh, I did it. And uh, sure, ew, I'm sure it, it'll work fine. <coughs> so we spent 42 days to make this release and inc included in this release are, well, announced in, in association with this release, we announced three different security advisories. So we've fixed three security problems that are uh, within this release. And of course, we've also shipped the fixes or the patches for this, these fixes. So you can actually merge the fixes for into previous releases too, if you want to. And, and I'm sure a lot of distributions and so on will do that. And first we will start with a Windows only thing called that I called S channel cipher selection surprise. I'm such a creative when it comes to naming the flaws. It's really difficult, you know, naming is hard and, and naming security flaws is even harder, I think, maybe. So this is just a silly little thing that is, 
if you set a if you set up different transfers with libcurl and you <clears throat> use s channel as a tls backend and you cr change the cipher selection on one transfer uh, it will affect other transfers simply because we were using static in the library where we shouldn't use it so one selection would affect another uh, connection and transfer unknowingly and uh, undeliberately <clears throat> so surprise and it could of course lead to something bad i really think it's a really fringe use case and it, it, it's very rarely actually does that but um, yeah that's it you should be aware and you should be caution about it and uh, upgrade preferably and then another fun little thing is the telnet stack contents disclosure and of course this is telnet not that many users use telnet with curl not the command line tool and not the library so this is another rather niche and uh, um, special flaw but it's an interesting flaw because <coughs> If you would use, I mean, at times you would use Telnet just you know check if a port is open, if it works, or anything. And with Telnet, you can pass on options, which is pretty much a series of variables, you know, name, contents, uh, pairs. And if you would pass that uh, those names in, in an, using a wrong syntax to curl. Uh, you can read it up the details but if you would do that using the wrong syntax in a particular particular way you could actually get curl to instead include contents from the stack instead of sending proper <coughs> variable contents so if you would if for example you have a tool somewhere or a, something uses curl that uses curl or libcurl that you can inject these uh, variables into you could make those things send stack contents which could be but, uh, something really ser uh, terrible but you know it's already telnet so reasons or uh, i mean telnet is already a plain clear text protocol and yes you could leak stack contents with this in a really fringe niche case <coughs> if you ever allow or can use telnet with curl read up on this or just upgrade and and be happy uh, rather than uh, rather nasty flaw this has been uh, this flaw also it is in code that was modified uh, 20 years and two months ago so quite an old thing some flaws takes a long time to find <clears throat> and then the the worst one out of all the f the security issues the tls session caching disaster i call it um okay so bear with me this is the one that is actually getting now the record amount uh, the the new bug bounty reward record two thousand us dollars we paid as uh, to the reporter of this and if you look at the advisories for all these three you will quickly notice that they were all reported by the same reporter so the same reporter got all the <laughs> rewards this time so it's thousand eight hundred dollars in total so this caching disaster thing it is okay let me get into some specifics here but you should really really read up this read on this advisory if you're using OpenSSL libcurl in, in a in a application and you're not upgrading libcurl because you want to read up on the details here but the thing is that sometimes you can get information about a TLS session um, that is not um, within, I mean, after it's post handshake. So you, we get it mid connection. And since we, due to how we do things internally in curl, we could then restore an uh, association with that connection to the transfer. And we could in some time, in some situations have freed the, the transfer data when we get a uh, new data for the connection. So the connection would then refer back to the transfer that no longer exists, or it could be freed, or it could be replaced by other memory. So if you, in some, if you by some lucky happen chance stance or, or just, you know, very careful crafting could from your server, make sure that you replace that memory contents with something that you control, you could actually get a remote code execution. 
<clears throat> if you read up on it, you will see that it's really, really hard to actually exploit this from a server, and it's very, very unlikely to ever hit anyone. But, but if you're using libcurl in a sort of browser-like situation and you have a certain pattern on how you do transfers and connections, it could affect you. I, I mean, the, the remote code execution. It, the use after free situation in here is more likely to happen and is more likely to just be a crash. And the crash has been reported by several different sources. So it does happen as a crash. Uh, I think that is what you, you, you'll most users will see that crash even if if you use your imagination here we can imagine ways or scenarios when this can be much worse than just the crash um, this is the second time we get a security flaw in the same setup open SSL in the same callback se uh, update session uh, thing it's a difficult thing and as I then mentioned, then we have a new uh, record amount of bug bounty payouts during a single release cycle, 3,800 US dollars, and 2,000 of them paid to a single one of those uh, reports as the new record bug bounty. So I'm really happy to be able to reward uh, researchers this, um, like this, and I'm hoping that we can continue this. And of course, the only way we can do this is thanks to the sponsors that are uh, graciously donating and sponsoring us uh, recurringly. So this is one way we're using the curl uh, fund. And I want to be clear that this is uh, what some of your money is going to if you're donating to the curl project. We're doing new stuff again. We, you know, we reset the, the patch number in the curl re version number. So this is 777.0, which means that we've changed things. We've added features, we've done th something. So we have some new stuff. I actually count th the number of changes as f five, I think, in the release notes, but we can also count them as four because I think I, I counted the changes twice. One of the changes is basically one in the curl tool and the library and the, they were counted as two. But anyway, first, uh, what is everyone who's running configure when they're building curl will now notice that curl, if you just run curl, uh, curl's configure script without any ad uh, additional options, it will now say burp, please tell me which TLS library you want to use. So now we no longer pick one by default. We don't make that decision for you anymore. Previously, that would mean that we would go and use, try to use OpenSSL by default. Um, and we no longer do that. And this is just a way to push the decision to the user instead to take that uh, responsibility away from us. We will not make that decision for you anymore. So if you wanna, if you wanna do that on your own, uh, I mean, you should do that decision on your own. So whoever builds curl will now decide by themselves which TLS library to use. I'm sure a lot of users will still go with with dash dash with OpenSSL and it'll build exactly like before, but now the builder took that decision, we didn't. This is an ongoing step for, for, for me and for us to make sure that we, we allow everyone to compete on the same conditions. All the TLS libraries, they compete on their own merits and, and we don't need to make that decision. And I wanna make, um, I, wanna, I want us to, sort of, you know, it's not our decision. You make that decision, you decide which TLS library is the preferred one, which is the most mature one, which is the one you want to use. And then related to TLS or the SSL or whatever you want to call it, uh, I've this release cycle, I removed the last traces of being able to use SSL. You know, SSL version 2 and version 3, the precursors to TLS. They're really old. Most TLS libraries don't have them enabled by default anyway, so you really couldn't set them. Uh, because the TLS libraries will say yeah, we don't support them. But now I also made sure that you can't even set them with libcurl. So libcurl will already, even before trying to use the TLS library, it, it will say, yep, I don't know what you're talking about. This is not a supported version. Basically, it just removes code. So it was just plain stupid to have it around because you couldn't use it in practice anyway. So yep, get rid of that and then we can update documentation and so on. And 
you know explicit be explicit about we don't support till, uh, SSL versions anymore in any build um, I, I've um, I introduced HSTS support in curl experimentally uh, many moons ago I don't remember exactly when uh, half year ago and I marked it experimental I hope that people would use it try it out and report some issues with it but you know it goes back to the things I've talked about before people don't use experimentals they don't exp uh, enable it because people don't build curl by themselves so nobody's using it or trying it out so I don't get any reports and it just sits there and I am um, so we worked it on it and uh, we enabled it now by default in the build so starting with this release uh, a default build will with will have HSTS support and HSTS support in in curl is basically a way to it's you know if you get an HTTPS uh, download the headers in that response can say don't ever try to access this site using HTTP again for this many seconds into the future and if you use the command line tool or however you want to save that information somehow similar to a cookie file you could save that cached information so that in in repeated invokes curl will notice oh this is a site that we shouldn't use http with we should upgrade to https automatically or so that we aren't aren't vulnerable for that little redirect thing <coughs> But uh, uh, right, I should also mention with HSTS that we don't have any um, lists of domains that are HSTS by default, which you, if you know HSTS, that's the way the browsers do. They have huge lists of domains that are already that you know HSTS by default. So they would never go in clear text to those domains. Uh, curl doesn't have those lists because those lists are huge because uh, there are many I, I think they're in the uh, ballpark of I think 700k when compressed or something like that so um, you can still use those lists there there are ways to get them and you can put them in your tool and application if you really need to and you could make um, using the API you can actually populate the list um, with them if you want to <clears throat> we also uh, add APIs or options to use now certificates in particular than uh, CI search um, in memory instead of in files. This is a fairly long time feature request that has been discussed and, and uh, asked for for a very long time. So that when you write an application, perhaps in an embedded system or something that doesn't have a file system or some sometimes you want to bundle everything in one single binary without using any external files. Now you can bundle the certificate into the, the binary and use a regular API to do this. You could actually uh, work around it before to using some of the other more TLS specific APIs, but now we introduce a plain and simple one. <coughs> it doesn't support all the TLS backends, so it, um, you need to read up on this. And I'm sure that, or I hope that we will get support for more backends to support these APIs going forward. But of course, it requires that people that are fluent and, and, no, and knowledgeable about these particular TLS backends actually you know roll up your sleeves and, and help us fix this <clears throat> those were rather i would say small changes in this release but uh, could be important to some uh, we did quite a few bug fixes so 133 no uh, documented bug fixes which is i think uh, over 42 days that's more than three bug fixes per day which is a higher rate than usual and I'll mention a few of them just because I think some of them might be worthy of more height highlighting than others. <clears throat> there, are, you should of course go to the change log, and you can click the links in there if you want to read up on the details about everything we landed and and fixed in this release. But notable, maybe for users. Well, this is notable for users if you used if you use a curl that is built with Open L app or with lib meta link which i think at least some distributions do they you will now see those uh, 
libraries and version numbers in the you know if you do curl dash dash version you will see them in the output <coughs> um, so that's a library change and a tool change actually so they're two different changes but they the change the version output and I it struck me because I worked with someone who uh, filed a bug first I've had a bug with open LDAP and curl and I didn't know which version of open LDAP was that was used which was a mistake and then I had the same thing with a met a meta link bug and I didn't know which meta link version that was used there either so now they're included in the version output which helps when people report bugs and we discuss curl versions and you know differences between curl builds and so on I spent some time to document the curl mprint and the, the, I mean the mprint family because the mprint and there's a whole, I, I think we have seven, eight different functions that are pretty much print clones or clones of the printf family functions, and they're they're not clones in the in the way that they were because they don't work exactly like the POSIX print implementations. I once introduced them because I wanted to have SN print support when I wrote curl the lib curl. And then I, in my uh, lack of better judgment, I figured I sh could use, uh, export this as in the API for other applications that wanted the same, you know, they too might want SN printf. I think that was wrong because printf has nothing to do with transfers, so we should never have put them in the API to begin with. But we did, and since we don't break the API, and we haven't done in a very long time, we have this in the API, I figured finally, I should be take my responsibility and actually document how it works because it's in the API. So there will be some users, even if we discourage users from using it because it's not really transfer related, it should be documented. So I spent some time, I think it's accurate. So if you're using this, one of these functions, which you shouldn't read the, the documentation. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I had a long discussion about this particular bug fix because it wasn't really clear how the, this option curl opt IP resolve, um, which uh, act <laughs> how it should work. It's just the option that you say should curl use IPv4 or IPv6 or any version when you connect when you do a transfer, and that might sound a, bit, a little bit you know innocuous, just IPv4 or IPv6. But what does it actually mean? In so in previous versions, this made curl prefer to use an existing connection, even if you set this option. I, I want, I prefer IPv, whatever. If you prefer IPv6, <clears throat> um, and then, but if you found an existing connection to that host, you would still use that. So it would prefer to reuse a connection, even if you said you prefer the particular IP version, even if the existing version used a different IP version, which was very confusing. So if you said, I prefer IPv, I want, I want to use IPv6, but previously you had an IPv4 connection up, you would use that anyway. So your preferred IPv6 would still use IPv4. And the documentation language actually allowed that, I think, but <clears throat> that made it impossible for, for an application to for example, set up a connection that is, you know is IPv4 and another that is IPv6 to the same host, maybe. And it, or you want it to fail if it can't. So uh, now you can, now it'll be uh, acknowledged much more. So now if you say IPv6, it will really try to actually use IPv6 for that connection, even if there's an existing connection over IPv4 that won't be used. Now it'll be a little bit more stricter and stronger. This shouldn't affect any existing users because it'll just, well, it will affect existing users in the, in the way that it will use slightly more connections, but the connections will be more um, fulfilling to the what you're asking for. Maybe, uh, you know, <laughs> difficult, difficult territory. Still, that's, that's it. And then I had a user, uh, had an interesting use case actually that I will blog about someday, but they are using curl easy send you know that's their very raw you when you extract the socket from from libcurl and you just use easy send and receive 
<coughs> to send whatever data because you have your own protocol and you uh, and then I realized that if you're using Carlisi Send and the connection goes down, it, it wouldn't ignore the SigPipe signal like we do everywhere else in, in the in the API and that the way we want to do it. So I made sure that we do, and that made the API better and more consistent with how we want to do things. Okay, <clears throat> then there are some more bug fixes to mention. I've lumped a lot of HTTP2 things into uh, what I call several HTTP2 fixes. I just need to shut up the desktop audio here. Uh, hang on for a second. Uh, <coughs> okay, because uh, we did, for example, we fixed... Um, what did we do? We fixed memory leaks in error conditions. I made sure that when you get uh, an error back on over HTTP2, uh, a, a popular one, no, not so popular one, but, but because it's been causing us problems many times, called HTTP 1.1 required. Uh, we no longer close the connection by force because we don't have to, because it's only that particular transfer that needs to change protocol. And it does now. And, and, and there were some other things. I will mention another HTTP2 as well. Uh, in a second. Uh, mm, so there were, I, I think it's interesting that we keep on fixing HTTP2 things. Um, there was also a race condition where we stored information wrongly in the connect related struct instead of the transfer related. So <coughs> it's been uh, one of those issues that's been with us for a very long time that uh, just happened to not have been noticed before. Another thing that I hadn't noticed before, which was uh, struck me as surprising, was that we didn't handle partial connect requests properly. So, you know, when you set up a connection to a proxy, an HTTP proxy, and you want to tunnel through that proxy, uh, typically because you want to do TLS to the remote server, you set up a connection to the proxy, you send a connect request, you get a tunnel through, and then you, you work on that through that uh, tunnel. And it turned out that if curl fails to send the entire connect in one go, in one send command, it wouldn't uh, survive that correctly. And in in this particular bug uh, situation that uh, I got reported, it was um, <coughs> someone who actually had a larger than 16k connect request. So they wanted to send a connect with one of these, you know, humongously huge authentication headers that was i think the that single header alone was almost 16k and anyway it caused curl to fail and now i worked on making sure that it actually it works to send partial connect uh, sends and it actually works to send larger than 16k connect requests to as a sort of side effect or bonus so now you can send ridiculously long authentication headers in connect requests with curl yay or yeah at least that's how it, how it is. Our good friends who are working with um, with Hyper uh, or someone who used Hyper, the Hyper backend to do HTTP in curl noticed that we actually used the wrong condition for enabling HTTP2 when uh, uh, using TLS. So if you, you would go HTTPS, uh, we would only enable HTTP2 if if we also used ng HTTP2 in, in the build, which when you if you use hyper, you wouldn't do. So <clears throat> just an improvement in the hyper build. Um, there will be more improvements in the hyper build going forward, but since it's not related to this version, I won't go into that right now. So HTTP2 over HTTPS should work better with hyper now. I worked on and I blogged about and talked about this separately. Uh, I norm now we normalize numerical IPv4 hosts, and this means that if you specify a numerical IPv4 address in a URL with curl, you know, 127.0.0.1, that's one, one, one way to do it, right? But there are other ways to do it. You, for example, you could put it just as a big 32-bit number, or you could use... Uh, um, a 16-bit number and then two 
8-bit numbers, and you can specify those numbers in octal or in hex. This is a format typically supported by ping, it's supported by get host by uh, get get sort of get adder info is the uh, function call. So <clears throat> and it's also supported by the um, the what wg URL specification. Uh, so you can you 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 can use that odd way to specify IPv4 hosts in browsers. You can use them with a lot of network tools. You could use it with curl if you didn't use CARIS. So it was supported, partially supported, and in tools and, and browsers everywhere. And now I've just made it official and I normalize it. So I parse it properly. And now it works then with the same way, even if you build curl with CARES, it will work the same way. And if you use this, um, it will actually work better too, because now if you use, if you use that octal version in the URL, it will still send the right, it will normalize it. So the host header and uh, the SNI part, uh, well, not SNI because SNI isn't used for IP, but the host header in HTTP will be right. So if you use that now, the funny way to go to an um, IPv4 only address, it will send the normalized version in the header and it will work better. <clears throat> and it will actually then work more in line with how browsers work with, with these funny ways of doing it. I'm not encouraging anyone to use these funny versions because they're more funny than actually useful still that's what we do now and i just wanted to mention another fun little s bug that we've had now forever one reason this is annoying is because libssh2 partly i'm to blame here because i worked a lot on, on making it libssh2 asynchronous or it's a sort of non-blocking but one of the side effects with its api that's really not good is that you know when you're when you want to clean up in a disconnect phase when you want to disconnect the connection an, SS, an scp or sftp connection um you you need to <coughs> do that in a non-blocking way even with libs, libs sh2 because it can return a would block situation and if curl then would already have bailed out a uh, transfer because it has it, you know it took too long it took 30 seconds we need to bail out then it goes into this connect disconnect phase that it also needs to have a timeout in because it will return it would block so in that you know uh, in that loop when it, it does the disconnects it also checked for timeout with me which meant that if it disconnected the transfer because of timeout it would immediately bail out from the disconnect procedure too because it had already timed out and that led to a little memory leak uh, in LibSSH2 data. Primarily because LibSSH2 API is a bit stupid here. I need to go and help them fix that at some point. But now <coughs> I had to do something uh, uglier. So now it actually ignores the timeout in the disconnect phase. Um, that has a potential risk to backfire at some point point but yeah, yeah that's how it works then we changed IOC network for the curl ch IOC channel um, we ditched the old network we are on Libra chat now don't go to any other IOC channel because we won't be there and you will see because it's going to be dead silent and abandoned so <clears throat> this particular day may 26 we also had an extra particular fun irc drama in the world but let's not get into that because we don't care we're on this network now we're there all the time quite a few people at the moment we're 130 people joined we're talking curl and uh, related stuff most of the time or uh, being silly about other things going forward we're going to aim for a 778.0 a in about eight weeks and we have stuff to work on or plan to work on for example we are talking about fixing <coughs> local hosts to make it truly local i have a pr pending that makes sure that local host always resolves to a local host that is the loopback addresses uh, which is uh, 
it's not pr uh, it's not sort of straightforward it's not obvious that we should do this and need to do it but i want to do it to, to remove confusions and possibly um, users could be hurt by us not doing this because people i think a lot of users actually believe that localhost is the local host but it's not in some cases and i think we should just remove those the risk for those cases i've talked about it before and i'm going to move forward uh, with this pr once we have the uh, feature window open uh, this is another PR, I mentioned it before, it hasn't landed or uh, yet, but it would talk about setting the stream window size for the con stream window size. Yeah, because w when you pause streams, we might end up actually having to cache that many, that much data in libcurl. So the larger you set it, the more data we might need to cache when you pause transfers and vice versa. If you, read. But it's also good to have it big for performance reasons. So ups and downs get the async gathering info support i still want to do let's get it working there's a patch pending for adding user authentication support for mqtt well sending the credentials name and password at least uh, i mean you can do it in the in the protocol has a specification for it so it's basically a matter of, of um, putting in the glue between how we do it in curl and uh, over to the MQTT and making sure that our test server also supports it and so on. Uh, it, it, it's looking good. I'm going to uh, move forward with an API change in for the URL API, which, uh, well, it might not actually be an API change, but I want to make sure that the URL, I, the URL parser doesn't accept spaces anymore as part of the URL because spaces were never part of the URL. So it's not that um, I actually change something. I'm I'm changing it in the in the way that I'm making sure that the URL parser becomes a little bit more strict and more uh, in line with uh, how it should do. Partially because people will use that our uh, API to verify uh, URLs, right? And if you verify a URL and you accept spaces in it, you, we will accept things that aren't. URLs. And if you set a URL with spaces in it, curl doesn't really handle it perfectly unless you also set another option. So I'm, I'm going to disable spaces by default. I'm going to have a flag to enable spaces by uh, if you really need to have that. <coughs> Partially because we do that internally. So if you, for example, follow redirects with curl, it will accept redirects to URLs with spaces because that's what browsers accept. So, yeah, you could potentially see this as an API change. I see it more as a bug fix with a slight, well, all bug fixes are potentially API changes. <clears throat> uh, it's a difficult thing to maneuver, but I think that's the right way forward. So we still have some things to work on going forward that are remaining from before. I've mentioned it, this before, locked data and own hosts. I think this PR has stalled a bit. It might die. We'll see about that. There are HTTP3 fixes to do. I got a new bug report the other day about sending post over HTTP3. So yes, uh, I think we're, uh, we're piling up HTTP3 things to work on. Oh, that's the same thing. I already mentioned it uh, twice. Fun. That too. Good. I should have removed that from the previous slide. Fun. But it made it faster. So the plan is if we stick to this schedule, there will be a release in, on July 21, um, 2021. 21, 21. <coughs> There's, I think, maybe a slight risk that I will uh, just adjust that uh, release date just because it's in the middle of the summer for me. I haven't really, I'm not sure exactly how this will interfere with my summer plans, but I will get to that in proper time in that case. So, but anyway, here's so far we're sticking to the schedule and you can go there to see the current release notes uh, and the next plan release date and everything and read up on, on whatever uh, we're planning to do next. Uh, what else is there to say uh, except that if you want to <coughs> get support by support get help by features or whatever you need help with uh, 
right now within curl you contact us at curl.se slash support dot html i have some fun contracts coming up and you will s you will all reap the benefits of that and uh, <clears throat> because i'm there will be stuff merged uh, into the mainstream going forward with work that i have uh, set out in, in the coming weeks maybe months so there are good companies paying for support and uh, you should get your companies to do that as well if you find bugs go here and submit them of course you can just you know google up this address anyway submit bug reports this is a now an old graph of the bug bounty payouts and if you suspect a secure problem or you know a secure problem you found one go to hackerone.com slash curl and file it now and uh, you can get a lot of money if you're right and it is truly a security problem and uh, nobody reported it before you we have a lot of good sponsors that are paying um, sponsorship money to the curl project that are helping us send stickers pay bug bounty uh, report uh, rewards and other things um, some of them of course pay for infrastructure ci and uh, servers and so on a lot of good people there this is curl curl.se is our home uh, this is the release 777.0. See you in uh, another few weeks, hopefully in eight weeks when we do the next release. And until then, take care, everyone. Bye.